Okay, now hear me out. I'm not one to prescribe hard rules to anyone. There is no one right way to do much of anything. Do whatever works for you. However, drawing in a sketchbook has some serious benefits and I personally swear by it. I first started drawing in December of 2017 and I've drawn almost exclusively in sketchbooks the whole way through. On screen are all of my old drawings from my 18th through to 21st sketchbooks. Now I've got nothing against loose paper, don't get me wrong, it's great to draw something on a bit of paper that you can pin up somewhere or stick on your wall or throw in a shoebox afterwards to forget about it while it gets eaten up by moths, whatever, that's all fine. But sketchbooks offer a few main benefits that I will praise until the day I die. I love to keep my stuff organized, and I love being able to look back over the progress I've made and see when I made what bits of art. Drawing in a sketchbook, that's all taken care of automatically. As long as you write the date down somewhere on the thing, you more or less know when you made all of those drawings. This is super important, I think, because the artist's journey is such a long one that you can quickly lose sight of where you've come from and how much you've progressed since you first got going, especially in the early days. When you first pick up drawing, since that's where you're probably going to see the most technical progress in the shortest period of time, it's super valuable to hold on to all of those scribbles, no matter how dodgy they might be. Once you've been drawing for a while, you get the basics down pretty easily, so something like drawing a clean line in one stroke at the start is really hard, but a year or so in probably isn't even on your mind anymore. At that point, your focus will have shifted to anatomy or storytelling or some other more advanced thing. Once the muscle memory has started to really develop and sink in, you've got it locked down. You don't even need to think about how to move your arm to draw that face anymore. It's entirely automatic in the movement of your arm and your pencil now. As the basics become second nature, your focus is naturally going to shift and your mind starts to focus on the tougher things, like visualizing what you're drawing before you move the pencil, understanding the 3D form, and etc. And so the great part about doing it all in a sketchbook is that that progression is all recorded right there for you to look back over from the beginning till the very end. It's way too easy for us to forget just how challenging those early days are, and because of that we end up beating ourselves up over not making enough progress without even having a clue how difficult it was to get started in the first place. You think that since we made all of those drawings, we just remember how hard it was, but that's just not how our minds work. It all gets filtered out and over time we forget and just assume that we've always been this good, or when we're in a crap mood that we've always been this bad. If all I had were a handful of my best drawings from each year that had gone by, whenever I looked back over my old art, I'd probably feel a lot more like I'd stagnated pretty hard. If all you keep are the best ones, then all you see is yourself at your peak, very slowly crawling higher. But after you've been drawing for a while and that progress stops being so noticeable, you'll just be left with a paper trail of, uh, like your best stuff, so you're always going to be comparing your current average or low point to your previous best, where every new thing you learned was a bigger chunk of what you didn't yet know and therefore being a way bigger chunk of the overall XP you needed to reach the level of mastery, whatever that means. If you hold on to everything though, at least for me, it's a really good reminder of just how bad those early days were and of how slow and tough that progress really was. Obviously, I'm the extreme here though, most people aren't going to hold on to every single drawing. But my point here is that you shouldn't toss away all the bad ones. Your old art has a lot of value too, even when it doesn't make for a pretty picture. Like if I fast forward to now, drawing is still really challenging, but it's not the act of drawing that's the hard part. I probably sound like a broken record to anyone who's seen another one of these sketchbook tours, but drawing isn't hard. There's nothing physically demanding about moving a pencil across a piece of paper. The thing that makes art challenging is your mind and your relationship with creativity. Which duh, that's what we mean when we say art is hard. But if art was hard on day one and is still hard on day 2000, then getting more skill clearly isn't gonna fix that, you know? Your attention needs to be on why it's hard for you to make art in the first place. What stuff is getting in the way when you sit down to draw, or what's stopping you from sitting down to start in the first place? If I hadn't held on to all of these old drawings, I might have fallen into the endless mind trap that I just need to keep studying, keep practicing, fill more sketchbooks, tear through more paper, more pens. But none of that really matters. Mileage is honestly kind of overrated. Like when you're first starting out, absolutely just draw a lot. You need to build up that initial muscle memory. But the mental skills are so much more important in the long term, and even in the short term it's the mental skills that impact how fast you learn, how much XP you gain with every drawing that you make. 
it's really easy to undervalue this stuff and just focus on the grind, but if you actually want to progress fast, you've got to put more thought into each action that you take. You've got to slow down and actually take the time to reflect on the mistakes and successes that you've made. Anyway, segue, uh, those are the main reasons to keep a sketchbook if you're newer to art. It's a great way to log your journey and it's, I think, a really good habit to develop. But if you're more advanced, the benefits are honestly even cooler. This is where the really exciting stuff starts. I love watching sketchbook tours on YouTube and the ones I come back to the most are probably Kim jong Gi's. or why am I saying probably, they're definitely Kim jong Gi's. His sketchbooks are crazy cool to look at and not just because of how good he is. Actually, him being good at drawing is probably the least interesting thing about his sketchbooks. There's tons of technically great art out there, and if that's what you care most about, you'd probably just dive into the world of fine art. The reason his sketches are so cool is all the life that they hold, the stories that he tells. When he visits a new country, his sketchbook is out the whole time, recording the world around him. He draws his trips with his family, creates little comics of whatever goofy stuff his friends are talking about while they're out exploring. They're honestly just so great. And this is the real reason that I love sketchbooks so much. They're such a great way to record your real-world adventures. Taking photos is great, I love taking photos when I'm out traveling, but pulling out your phone can really take you out of the moment when you're out in the world. Those things are built to distract you, with flashing lights and apps with logos all designed to draw you in, and notifications that ding and remind you that, hey, there's something really cool going on down here, ooh, phone bad. I'm kidding, but they are distracting, and if you had the option to pull out your phone whenever you sit down at a cafe versus pulling out your sketchbook, which one is going to be more fulfilling? With your phone, you can take a few quick photos, and that's nice, but with your sketchbook you aren't taking yourself out of what you're doing, and you aren't risking the distraction that a phone inherently carries. With a sketchbook, you're absorbing yourself more into the world around you, which probably seems counterintuitive from an outsider perspective. Either way, you're pulling out a slab that draws all of your attention into it. But to draw what you're seeing around you and record your journey while you're out traveling or out with friends or whatever it is, it actually kind of requires you to pay more attention to what's going on around you. You've got to look for an interesting story to tell, or think about the room from another angle, or even if you're not going to go that deep, it's just such a unique way to remember these moments of your life. Because if you spend 10 minutes or so creating that one picture as opposed to 5 seconds snapping a quick photo, it'll stick with you way longer, the memory will be stronger and hold way more sentimental value. And of course, you're going to be grinding out more art skill, blah blah, grind set, learn to draw, whatever, that's cool too I guess. It is cool, it just feels hollow when there isn't more behind it. Anyway, uh, I've made other videos, those are kind of cool too, I think at least, uh, maybe you should watch them. Uh, okay, goodbye. <laughs>